Welcome back to the finale of a lifetime. Stranger Things season four was in every way bigger, better, and scarier than every single season that came before it. I have never gone to bed so emotionally distraught before like I did after watching season four's finale. And spoilers, duh, but the only one thing that let me go to sleep was this. I am so happy that they finally gave us Jopper. These characters have deserved to be happy for four seasons now. And let me tell you, after all they've been through, it's about time they finally get what they deserved. And right now, there are so many many things up in the air that they left open-ended going into season 5 and I needed to talk about them with you guys. After taking two massive molotovs to the face while he was unconscious and a whole lot of Nancy and her shotgun, oh yeah, and getting shot out of the attic window of the Creel house, I cannot believe that Vecna still survived. And probably the biggest what if of the entire show, for almost six long excruciating episodes, they've been stringing Max's life over our heads like it's a game to them. In Vecna's crosshairs until the very end, like we were expecting, which led to one of the most emotional performances out of the entire show from Lucas. I haven't had a hole in my chest that big in a long time. Is Max coming back? Are we just going to breeze over the fact that Eleven now has healing powers? What does that mean for the show now? Is Max going to die? Is she going to come back blind? We are going to be talking about all of this, plus how dirty they did our boy Eddie. That man did not need to die. Why do the Duffer Brothers like to torture us like this? First Alexi and now Eddie? I'm telling you, they love giving us these characters to fall in love with, only to kill them off before they can make it to the next season. But with season five, the next season being the very last, I am more scared than ever for all of our main characters. More specifically, Elle, Mike, Steve, and Will. But I'm gonna get into that into the next video, which by the way, only 12% of you guys that watch the videos are actually subscribed. If you love Stranger Things, go down right now and punch that subscribe button in the face. I've got a lot of big Stranger Things videos coming out each week that you're not going to wanna miss. It doesn't cost anything, it's totally free, and it really helps me out. We're trying to hit 500K before the end of the year, so subscribe now if you want to join before we hit the big 500. Also, I made some Stranger Things Season 4 finale screensavers to hold us over until Season 5. I put them on my Twitter, at It's Michael J. Go check them out and let me know which one you like the best. I'm going to leave a plate of cookies down in the comments for everyone who subscribes, so go get them while they're hot. But I'm just going to jump right into the video because we have so much to talk about. I cannot believe that they tricked us with the finale. I truly thought that just like all the other seasons, we were going to end on a good note. Elle was going to get her powers back, save Max and the kids in Hawkins, they would defeat Vecna, and then we would learn about the giant mind flare threat that we had going into season 5. But nope, they literally Avengers endgamed us without a follow up. This was just so wrong. So many cliffhangers and not even a post credit scene. They just left everything up in the air. Literally, we have no idea what's going to happen next or when we're going to find out. Maybe they thought that since it probably won't take another 3 years to get season 5 out that they'll just release it quicker and we'll be happy, but I was not expecting them to leave everything unconcluded like that. Honestly, I can't believe they didn't do another post credit scene showing Vecna is still alive and retreating to the upside down only to find a massive army of demogorgons and demo dogs waiting for him that he's going to come back and attack Hawkins with. In season 3, not only do we get a post credit scene teasing that Hopper might still be alive and in a Russian prison, but they also gave us a 3 month later follow up explaining what happened, explaining what the town thinks of the mall fire and everything else that happened. It concluded with the buyers and L moving to California for safety and it also set up the Hellfire Club and the stigma around Dungeons and Dragons and all the fantasy scare that played such a huge role this season. They have teased that they will finally be doing a big time gap for season 5 just to help explain the kids growing up now and being 20 years old, but we have no idea what to expect. Nothing was set up. If anything, they didn't have enough time to wrap up all the stories and characters just because there was so many. I wanted to see Dimitri and Yuri make it back to the states. I wanted to make sure the general didn't kill off Sam Owens. I wanted to see Susie. And what happened to the mind flare particles the Russians captured and the Russian men that it went into wheel style from season two. Real quick, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of the video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that is reimagining everything about how you discover, shop for, purchase, and even experience new fragrances. Their goal is to help you discover your style and really help you get started on finding the right scent for you. On their website, they have a really helpful quiz you can take that looks at your personal preferences, scents you've used in the past, and a few quiz answers to help you find the fragrance you'll love. Scentbird carries Prada, Gucci, Versace, and niche brands brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. And how it works is for just $17 a month, they will deliver a new designer fragrance to your door each month. You can pick whatever new fragrance you've been wanting to try or 
that you've had your eye on for a while, and that includes perfumes, colognes, and a ton of unisex options. Personally, for a while now, I've been really struggling to find something to take with me on trips, but just at the moment when I needed them, Scentbird came in and hit me with three of their favorite scents for me to try, and honestly, they're the perfect size for me to take with me when I travel. This month, I tried Nuit de Sea by Issey Miyake, Noir Castle from English Laundry, and Well Played by Confessions of a Rebel. And you better believe me, I'm bringing Nuit de Sea on my next trip. I think this is my favorite scent of these three. It hits you with a little bit of a sweeter citrus smell at first, and then comes in with some darker tones like leather and pepper, and it just works perfectly for what I'm looking for. I love the fact that I can try a new cologne out for 30 days before committing to drop $150 to $500 on a full bottle. Scentbird just all around makes finding the right fragrance for you so much easier. If you'd like to try out Scentbird today, go down and click the link in my description and use the coupon code MJ55 to get 55% off your subscription. It's just a little over $7 for your first month, and Scentbird is available in the USA and Canada. All right, now back to the video. I feel like even though this season was 13 hours long and I can't wait to rewatch every second of it, they still didn't have enough time to address so many little things. How Hop survived in season three, how Brenner survived in season one, all of the other numbers, where Callie went, how the Russians transported everything, all those Demogorgons and the Mind Flare from Hawkins to Russia last season, why young Henry hates his mom enough to kill her, what Vecna wants to do with the world, and how he got his powers in the first place when he was little. There was kind of quite a few things that I wish they followed up on that we just didn't get time to see. There's gotta be so many deleted scenes of things that just didn't make the cut. They need to release like a 15 hour director's cut or something. Steve literally said, don't try to be cute or be a hero or something, and then minutes later, Eddie is trying to be a hero and dies. There's no way that they didn't record scenes of everyone reacting to Eddie's death. It just felt like 13 hours wasn't long enough for season four. I trust the Duffer brothers. They have made some really good work. All of the seasons have been extremely entertaining and not once have I felt like it's been too much or they've dragged it on. So to an extent, I think that Netflix should trust the Duffer brothers and let them make it as long as they want, especially make it as long as they need to to tell the story. I would love to hear it from their side of things if they were told by Netflix to keep it short and that forced them to cut things out that they didn't think were necessary but to us and as part of the story it seems pretty necessary there's some big plot points and scenes that would have added a lot of closure to certain storylines that we just didn't get and they did a really good job with what they had but I think with so many storylines and so many more characters this season it was just impossible to tell it all but then that brings up the question for the fans if season 5 is the final season and meant to conclude everything the entire show how long is too long? 15 hours, 10 episodes, or do you think they might need more? I feel like season four was their big season, four storylines and tons of new characters, while I almost feel like season five might just focus on all the characters in Hawkins doing different things, but for the most part, somewhat all together. I feel like that might be one of the only ways they'll have time for everything without being 20 hours long, which even still, I wouldn't mind if they did. Also, Max's death. Holy cow. I was expecting to be on the edge of my seat, but I have never seen anything so gripping in movies movies or television before. A plus job to the Duffer Brothers. I kind of feel like they should have kept the music closer to pull Max back. I almost wish they left the headphones on her head and just paused the music so Lucas could have turned it back on when he needed to. Or they could have even got an old school boombox from the surplus store, loaded up with all the kids' favorite songs, just in case, you know? Using Max as bait was such a huge risk. I still feel ill just thinking about it. I heard the song while I'm in the coffee shop writing this video, and seeing her bone snap for the first time just hit me so hard. I could couldn't believe I was watching it, and I just didn't want to accept it. Sadie Sink and Caleb both were absolutely outstanding for the Creel Attic scenes. It's kind of weird to see where this all left off. They definitely killed off Max, but then they pulled the biggest Uno reverse card out of their butt and gave Eleven healing powers now? What? And we just breezed right over that, for real? And yeah, she brought Max back to life, but she's not really back with us. She's in a coma, and when Elle went inside her mind in the hospital, it was blank. Max wasn't in there. What if Max is still inside Vecna's mind space? She has to still have some sort of connection to Vecna. She's the only one he's killed off to come back to life and technically survive. There's no way that she's not still linked to him in some way, and they didn't bring Max back for no reason. They're 100% either bringing her back from the coma or possibly even bringing her back blind. 
In the end, when Lucas was holding her, I don't know if you could hear it over all the tears in your eyes, but Max said she was scared and that she couldn't feel or see anything. I wouldn't be surprised if when she comes back, Vecna had still taken her eyes from her and she can't see, but instead he leaves her with some sort of connection to him that they'll explore in season five and end up using to track him down and fight him. If she has power somehow in season five from this, that would be sick. She would be literally the modern day Toph from Avatar. And in as bad shape as she's in, I can't help but think that just like this season, she's going to have a very important role to play in season five as well. I wouldn't be surprised if they focus on her so much it completely overshadows Will and his neck tingle, which I can't believe they brought back. It really just feels kind of like that's all they think he's good for. I'm telling you, the finale didn't have anything for him. This man needs a redemption with season five. This needs to be the season of Will. First off, you can get rid of those awful haircuts and take him to a real barber for once and stop letting Joyce cut his hair. She obviously doesn't know how. It's been four seasons. And then maybe give the dude a spotlight just for one episode at least. Having him contribute something more than his neck tingle to the story and fight against Vecna would be awesome. And don't get any crazy ideas. That doesn't mean kill him off. He deserves better than that. He always has. I'd really like to see him, Mike, and Jonathan do more in season five just since they got the weakest storyline this season. Which by the way, I have so many questions that I want answers to that some of I feel like they won't or some they can't even address anymore in season five. I don't think we're going to see how Brenner survived his death in season one, but maybe in an MK Ultra spinoff show, we could get a closer look at it. Same with all the other numbers and where Callie went. But I also want more season four follow-ups, like how Henry got his power, what his mother did that made her a bad person. Same with his sister. I also want to see Dimitri make it safely to the States. I loved him as a character. And pre-volume two, I was really rooting for Yuri to have a turnaround and become a hero. And as soon as I saw Dimitri start to give him that pep talk, I was like, yes, here it comes and then nothing. He picked them up after the Demogorgon was killed and that was it. I know that they were trying to build up the emotional scenes of Hopper and Elle finally reuniting and Joyce seeing her kids again and all that, but even a little scene of Yuri dropping everyone off in Alaska or something and just getting some official goodbyes would have been nice. I feel like there's gotta be some deleted scenes that didn't make the cut somewhere. I really hope they're planning on releasing a lot of behind the scenes content for season four, maybe even a little documentary series. Maybe that would help reassure us that some of this stuff wasn't completely forgotten about, but still, and I couldn't help but feel like like some of the more emotional scenes felt a little rushed, it might be unpopular opinion. I haven't looked around to see what everyone else thought yet, but honestly, the most emotional part of the finale for me, besides Max's bone snapping and realizing they're actually gonna do it, was when Dustin told Eddie's uncle that Eddie died a hero. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it, and I don't know why this was so more emotional than Hop and L's reunion or Joyce and the kids seeing each other again. Maybe it was because Eddie's uncle was the one person that believed in him from the very start, when everyone else assumed Eddie was was a killer, his uncle was literally the first one to stand by his nephew and believe in him. And just hearing Dustin tell him that Eddie died fighting a hero, fighting, sacrificing himself to save a town that hated him, it really hit me. I really like that Dustin took his necklace and gave it to him. I felt like this is one of the few things they just really nailed on the head with proper closure to post finale. I was really happy that they didn't drag it out and take until the end of season five to tell his uncle like they did with Barb's family. It got to the point where they were going to sell their house and use all of their life savings to try to find Barb before Nancy finally came forward and let them know. Plus, Dustin is such a wholesome character, it was so easy to cry with him over this new fan favorite character they blessed us with. And that little for Chrissy he let out was just the cherry on top of the cake. Chrissy, this is for you. I completely didn't see that coming and I just melted. I would love to see a what if comic in the universe where Chrissy and Eddie both survived and she went to go see his band play and then they eventually get together. <laughs> But nope, <laughs> they're together in Stranger Things Heaven with all the other characters that deserved better. Which, by the way, honestly, they didn't even need to kill off Eddie. Because for the most part, he took the same damage and beating that Steve did when they saved him for the first time. I was expecting they'd take him out with one strong final hit to save Dustin so it was more of a no-live situation. But in the end, when Dustin got to him, he didn't even look that bad. Besides the little wound on his neck, Steve looked worse when he almost died. I know they were going for a sad final moment between Eddie and Dustin, but it just felt like he could have survived, you know? It would have been nice to see him in season five for a little more screen time. I mean, look at Billy and Max. I think that was so much more emotional because he directly saved Eleven from the meat puppet and took one big fatal blow, killing him off in slow motion while our jaws dropped and tears filled in our eyes. And even after that, Max still held Billy and they got to have their last words and it was so freaking emotional. But with Eddie's death, 
He didn't throw himself in front of a fatal blow to save Dustin, he kinda ran in the opposite direction distracting the bats and indirectly saving him and the others by buying them more time, but even for his death, they didn't even show any fatal emotional blows, it was more on par with the couple bats taking bites out of his sides like Steve had, which was survivable, and then a shot of Dustin seeing the bats swarm Eddie in the distance. It was almost implied that he died at one point, I was like what are they doing, they could milk this and make it so much more emotional with a closer struggle with him and Dustin and his as soon as a few bats start nibbling at Dustin, one comes right for his face and Eddie jumps in front of it just having a bat rip a chunk out of his neck in slow motion before Nancy and Steve and Robin light up Vecna making all the bats stop. Then we'd have the scare of Dustin almost dying mixed with Eddie being for sure dead with no hope of saving him. And while it was still a hero's death, I can't help but feel like they did him a little dirty and they could have made it a tad more dramatic. But maybe they were worried that that would take away from Max's death though, I don't know. Because Max coming down from Vecna and telling Lucas she's scared and can't see anything hit me the hardest. Lucas sitting there with tears and blood coming down his face holding Max as tight as he could was so emotional. I feel like they could have made the Hop and L reunion a little more emotional too. I love that when she slammed the door it was still open 3 inches like he told her in his letter to her before he died. But but he kind of just walked in and they hugged. I feel like they didn't do the big emotional thing just so they could do the three inches door thing where he walks in. They could have gotten away with doing a slow motion scene of him stepping out of a car and Elle turning around in the doorway of the cabin and slow motion running to each other with tears in their eyes to an emotional song only for Hop to hug her and spin her around in his arms and then pick her up and hold her like Papa used to since Hop is her true father now, the real one that actually cares about her. I don't know, I feel like that could have just been an easy tearjerker scene, and I'm surprised Joyce wasn't sobbing uncontrollably after seeing Will alive. After all they've been through, maybe she's just finally starting to trust him and the others more. But still, I was expecting her to be more Joyce about it, if you know what I mean. I'm still just so shaken by the season ending on a bad note with Max gone and Eleven losing, I just really wasn't expecting that. At least with Avengers, they let us know the follow up was coming out just one year later. With season 5, we have no idea, and the time jump leaves everything up in the air. There's a giant tear through the middle of Hawkins right now and everybody knows about it. The big question now is, are Joyce's magnets going to stay on her fridge? I mean, we'll see how magnetic Vecna is in season 5, I can't believe we didn't get anything after him falling out of the ceiling on fire. No post credit shot of him wounded, barely making it back to the upside down, admiring the cracks in Hawkins and returning to a small army of monsters he's assembling? I was really expecting something at the very least. And same with Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan, what the heck, I guess they really are just going to go full love triangle in season 5. It'll probably be a season long thing until they kill off Steve. Now that they set up this dream for him of having six little nugget Harringtons with Nancy, they're just adding so much on now to really set up his emotional death next season. I have so many more videos coming soon though, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. Thank you so much to Scentbird for partnering with me on this video, check out the links below, and thank you so much to you guys for checking out Scentbird. I will see you soon with another video, but until then, I will see you in the Discord. Peace.